I have various unboxing videos that I've filmed but never uploaded to YouTube, and in most cases for good reason, but in my quarantine boredom, I thought I'd finally edit them all. Um, we start with the, the lights that I use for my videos, it's up there, uh, which I got a couple of years ago. This is the Aperture Amaran 672W. As you can see, box is quite small, it's about the size of an iPad. It comes in this lovely little case which holds everything that you need for the light. Plug, some spare LEDs in case any break, and it comes with these big two chunky batteries. And in the main section, they give you a lot of stickers. A filter, like a warmer filter that you can put over the front of the light because it's daylight balanced. And of course, the light itself. Quite slim, very small. This light comes in three varieties. There's the W, which is this one, and that's for wide. It's got a 75 degree beam angle. There's an S, which stands for spot, and that has a, a smaller, narrower 25 degree beam angle. And there's a C, which is the bicolor version, so you can dial it between daylight and a warmer tungsten light and that also has a wide 75 degree beam angle like this one. The downside of the C is you lose some of the intensity because half of the, the LEDs are the warmer color. This is on 23% brightness and we can dial that up all the way to 100 or rather 99. I didn't finish this video because there are a lot of other people on YouTube who review lights like this and they can uh, measure the, the intensity and the colour accuracy and compare them to similar lights and use them in a, a studio environment. I can't do any of that so it didn't really seem worth it. Um, but I am a fan of Aperture lights. Uh, I'm, I might buy one of the bigger ones at some point. Anyway, jumping back to 2014, I found this unboxing of the, the microphone that I use for videos. This is an Audix STX1 HC hypercardioid condenser microphone along with the Audix XMT25 shock mount which goes with this microphone and also an XLR cable. It's amazing how much higher my voice was at this point. This was second year of uni. A common mistake that people make is to use a shotgun microphone when recording dialogue or some other audio indoors. They're great for outdoors. Shotgun microphones, however, are not so good indoors. Instead, you should use a hypercardioid microphone. I say this as though I have any idea what I'm talking about. Um, I, I don't think what I'm saying is actually wrong, but I just read it on the internet. I've never had a shotgun microphone. Uh, I'm also not sure how much difference it really makes. Now, this is a relatively cheap uh, hypercardioid microphone compared to some of the ones that you can buy. I've just looked up the, the invoice for this microphone for, from when I bought it. Um, I paid £400 for this thing, which in hindsight was a ridiculous amount to be spending on a microphone when I was simultaneously getting into tens of thousands of pounds of student debt. But, I mean, it's, it's a good microphone, I'm still using it now, like six years later, here it is. A common alternative to this is the Audio-Technica AT4053B, and that's quite a popular microphone. This, on the other hand, is quite a mysterious microphone because there's not much about it on the internet. The reason I chose this microphone uh, was based on a guy called Ty Ford, who had a, a blog and seemed quite prominent, at least at the time, in like audio forums. Uh, and he spoke quite highly of this microphone and he seemed quite knowledgeable. I'm very impressed by the case. <laughs> the microphone's not quite straight inside. Something's gone a bit wrong there, but okay. So this is the microphone, really, really tiny microphone. There are bits of gold everywhere on this otherwise black finish. Shortly afterwards, um, I bought a, a preamp thing, which I'm also still using. It's on top of the camera, so I could connect this microphone to my DSLR. This is going to be an unboxing of a Juice Link Riggy Micro RM222 preamp for DSLR cameras. Juice Link products seem pretty hard to get a hold of in the UK. This is from Pink Noise. So the Juice Link doesn't come with any unnecessary packaging. JuiceLink.com is where you'll find out more about this. Sadly, you won't anymore because the company went out of business, which is a shame because I think it's a really good product. Here it is, a really tiny little black box. Now this can mount on the bottom of the camera, or with an extra adapter you can mount it on the hot shoe on the top. I'll skip the rest of this one since you can't buy this thing anymore and move on to some camera unboxings instead. Here it is, this is the Canon G7X Mark II. This is the original G7X, the, the Mark I which I've been using for vlogs for two and a half years. The Mark II has been out for quite a while, but I didn't upgrade because this was fine. The difference between them is not huge, but I keep dropping this one and smashing it. It still works, but it, it's a little bit smashed, and I thought that was a good opportunity to upgrade. Also got a, a little strap for it, 
a battery, always good to have more batteries. I assume these are the same type of battery. As you can see, it's, it's very similar in size to the, the old version. I still use the, the G7X Mark II. I have managed to not smash this one yet. This is the GoPro Hero 4 Black Edition, which is currently the best one that they have. What am I going to use this for? Good question. I'm hoping I'll find more uses than I've got at the minute. I did not. While the G7X has been a brilliant camera that I've used loads, the GoPro has never been very useful for me. Um, and I think I knew this when I bought it. This was right before exams in third year, so like my, my final year exams. Uh, and I think buying it was just me procrastinating and avoiding revision. It's waterproof so I can do more things with that. It'll be useful when I go travelling, when I go on holiday. My first exam is tomorrow. I probably shouldn't be playing with new toys and cameras the day before the first exam when I should be revising, but here I am. So there's a thing there, there's another thing there, there's another thing there. Not the finest unboxing. Um, I think I was a bit stressed about exams, in particular the one that was literally the next day. Hopefully I went back to revising shortly after that video. I've been using an iPhone 4S for three years now, and if you've been watching some of my other videos, you may have heard me complain about the terrible battery life that it now has. I should have really got the battery replaced six months ago, but I've just been managing with it. Been waiting for something else to come along to replace it with. And that thing is the iPhone 6. This has just been delivered. I'm really excited. This is a 128 gigabyte space gray iPhone 6. Okay, here we go. Oh wow. It's so light. So I have held these in the Apple store before, so I know what they're like, but it is amazing. It suddenly makes the 4S just look really tiny, really old and outdated. And I'm still using my iPhone 6 today, uh, so a better purchase than the GoPro. This is the Asus RT AC87U wireless AC2400 router, which apparently won some award from PT Pro in 2013 and is apparently quite good. It ended up not being very good and I sent it back, but this unboxing was quite informative. So 802.11, this is the specification for wireless networks, Wi-Fi. AC is the revision of that specification. Dual band, this means that it does 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz simultaneously. Wireless, good to know, AC2400, you'll see this kind of notation across many different router manufacturers. Now this is sort of an unofficial way to specify how fast the router is. This number is derived from the sum of the data rate at 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz. So they take those two data rates and add them together. Then they round it up and they get this number. So don't think of that as a speed. You'll never get 2,400 anything, megabits per second, whatever. Think of this as just like a, a way to classify the type of route and how fast it is. So you want one with a bigger number. It does make sense to get a bigger number there, but that's not any real world thing. What is irritating though is this is a rounded up version, I think, of 2,334 megabits per second. They do advertise that as a speed, except that is just the sum of the two data rates, the theoretical data rates from 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz. So A, you'll never get, they say on the back, that you get 600 megabits a second at 2.4 and 1,734 megabits per second at 5 gigahertz. A, you'll never get either of those speeds because they're theoretical speeds that you can't reach in the real world because of interference and data loss and all sorts of other problems. B, you can't just add them together to get a new speed and advertise that, so that number there is nonsense. I really didn't like this router or apparently its packaging, um, and it didn't work very well in our house. Uh, I, I never figured out why. But speaking of things that I sent back, here's an unboxing of a ridiculously big printer that I bought in third year. This is an all-in-one A3 printer from Brother, specifically the MFC J5720DW. It managed to get jammed on the first attempt at printing something, um, but I really don't know what possessed me to buy such a big printer when it had to fit in my uni room, um, and then in the car at the end of every term to go back home. Uh, I'm, I'm glad it had other problems which encouraged me to send it back. Scanning is wonky. You can see through the page and see both sides and it looks horrendous. The quality is... Okay, but when you try to print it out again, it's all lost because the print quality is below average. 
The whole thing is flimsy and the interface is slow to use. I never bought a replacement printer, I, I just stuck with the little black and white laser printer that I already had. Inside this suspiciously wrapped black box is a Belkin Thunderbolt Express dock. Plug aside, it's designed very nicely. It's obviously designed to look nice next to an aluminium Mac. Designed in California, assembled in China. They're really trying to make this feel like an Apple product. The Belkin dock was actually pretty good, and it's another thing that I still use now. But the rest of the video is just me plugging it in and being like, yep, it works. I'm sure you'll have bought things from Amazon before, but are you aware that Amazon has their own brand? It was a different time. Amazon Basics was new back then. It's called Amazon Basics. This is a DSLR camera bag, an Amazon Basics branded one. I think this might be their frustration free packaging. Seems really easy to open. And the main pouch, it opens this way. And then you shove all your things in there. Yes, I unboxed a bag. And it wasn't the only bag I unboxed. I also filmed a, an unboxing of the, the Crumpler Track Jack board backpack. Um, which I, I also didn't upload because it's just really boring. The final unboxing is me unboxing some boxes. And then subsequently filling them with, with cables. Lovely. I'm sure you can see why I never uploaded these, but I have two folders on my hard drive, one for videos that are in progress um, and one for videos that are done, and all of these unboxings have been sat in that to-do folder for years and years, so now I can finally move them all over to done. One more thing before I go, um, I think I'm going to try live streaming, uh, maybe on Twitch, I haven't figured out any of the details, but I'll put something in the description if you're at all interested in that. I hope you're all doing okay and staying safe. Thanks for watching.